Hi, today I'm gonna show you the pick and place and uh, the rest of the electronic assembly setup at the Tinker Mill Makerspace in Longmont, Colorado. Uh, I am building uh, some prototype boards of my uh, life powered solar product. Um, what we have here is a TM245P Neodan pick and place machine. Uh, we also have this uh, stencil printer here with a. I got a nice uh, stencil from Elecro, nice framed stencil that works very easily here in this uh, stencil printer. And we have a, a reflow oven here. So this uh, has been set up already. The, the biggest part of the job is actually setting up all these reels and, and uh, for the components. Uh, most of them I have on reels. There are some that are just strips and there are a couple of things that I need to place after the pick and place is done of it. So uh, this has already been programmed from uh, an Eagle script that I wrote. It can be downloaded on GitHub. Um, it basically uh, generates uh, the place file from Eagle Plus, it, uh, there's a script that basically merges the, the stack settings, basically all these component reels, so that it uh, comes up with a pretty, you know, pretty reasonable pick and place uh, sequence here. Um, so I'm gonna start this now. As you can see, I've set the global speed to 70. I find it a little... Uh... Oh, we're having a problem here. Okay, might as well stop, man. Okay. Um, what happened here, one reason that using strips is very annoying is that they don't come, come with leader tape. So I've actually... Um, try to extend these with some other leader tape but it tends to break it's just a, a major pain so I'll have to reset this here quickly so that the machine can continue so I've reset my rather hackish cover tape arrangement here let's hope it'll hold this time um, of course now the boards already have some components on them so Luckily I can tell the machine to uh, to bypass um, those components, I can go and config here. And um, previously I had noted that uh, circuit 1 board uh, component 11 was the one that uh, had failed. So we will now test, it, it shows that it's at the right component with the laser uh, crosshairs there. So now I do OK. And now if I do start, it will continue on from that part. Okay, this time I did get the part correctly. Skipping ahead, we're now uh, pretty far along. The second to last board. As you can see, it uh, moves pretty fast. It's definitely way faster than, than uh, stuffing these boards by hand. Um, as I said, this is set to uh, 70 speed right now. At 100 speed, it's even faster, but I found that accuracy suffers a little bit, so I prefer to keep it a little slower and have less uh, straightening out to do afterward. nozzle sizes. One is really tiny for the 0603 components and the other one is a little bigger for like bigger components like the chips and diodes and stuff. Um, that's why it's 
moving back and forth a lot. This cannot always use both nozzles for, for all components. Okay, starting on the, on the last board now. faster than I ever could have done it by hand. Usually I need to straighten out a couple of components but still it's definitely worth the time savings. So now I need to add some of the remaining components. Uh, I need to, to add the inductors, the sens current sense resistors and um, a little uh, chip that I uh, only had a very short strip of. I didn't want to really load it in here. It would only cause trouble. So now here's the board uh, with the remaining components populated and it's sitting in the reflow oven. So now I just need to select the right temperature curve and close it up and auto execute. So the oven will now follow this curve and try to match it as closely as possible to generate the correct temperature profile to um, melt the solder paste and actually attach the components to the board. Skipping ahead again, we are now in the cool down phase. As you can see, the oven puts on these little dots of the actual measured temperature as it goes and follows the profile pretty closely. So now the board is cooled down. And we are done. Reflowed. So these will be available pretty soon on tindy.com. Um, I'm populating um, various versions with different sense resistors because at this point I don't really know what current uh, limits people are looking for. Um, so check them out on tindy.com. You can find information about my products on lifepowered.com That's L-I-F-E-P-O-4-W-E-R-E-D.com And you can follow also my progress for different projects on hackaday.io